Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will get an overview of how the TLS bootstrapping process works in Kubernetes. So here's where we are now. We've configured two master nodes, a load balancer, and one worker node. We will now see how we can bootstrap the second worker node using the TLS bootstrap approach. Let's try to simplify this by only looking at a master and a would-be worker node. There are two types of certificates configured on the worker nodes, a server certificate and a client certificate. In the previous method, while configuring the kubelet for worker one, we specified the path to the server certificates for kubelet on worker one in its service configuration file like this. This is used by clients to connect to the kubelet. So who is a client and why would they connect to the kubelet? As of now, the only client that connects to the kubelet is the Kube API server itself to monitor the state of the node as well as to pull logs of pods running on the worker node when you run the kube control logs command or when you try to execute a command on a pod on the worker node using the kube control exec command. In case of worker 2, we don't have those generated and we don't want to do that by ourselves. We also configured the kube config file, which has the client certificates used by the kubelet to connect to the kube API server. Our goal with TLS bootstrapping is to automate the certificate management so that kubelet can take care of it by itself. All certificate related operations are carried out using the certificates API, which we have discussed about earlier in this course. For using the certificates API, the kubelet needs to be able to authenticate into the kube API server with the right set of permissions. So the first set of tasks that we are going to discuss here is to create the necessary set of permissions on the master node to allow the worker nodes to make these requests. A special type of authentication token called bootstrap token can be created for this purpose. Associate the bootstrap token to a group called system bootstrappers. We then configure the kubelet to use this token to authenticate into the API server. We can use the same token for all the worker nodes or create a separate one for each node. Once configured, what kind of permissions do these tokens have? Can they make any API calls on the API server? If so, wouldn't that be a security risk since we plan to distribute this token to all new worker nodes? Well, the token does not have any permission to start with. So you must assign a role to it for it to have enough permissions to make certain API calls. A default cluster role exists for this purpose, known as the system node bootstrapper role. This gives just enough permissions for the kubelet to submit a certificate signing request to the API server. Once this permission is assigned, the kubelet is able to generate a pair of certificates and submit the certificate signing request to the kube API server. At this point, if you run the kube control get CSR command, you will see a new CSR request come in for this node. Now you can choose to manually approve it, post which the worker node will fetch the certificate and start using it. But if you have a cluster with thousands of nodes, it's going to be a tedious task. So you can choose to allow these certificates to be automatically approved by associating another role to the group called System Certificates Certificate Signing Requests Node Client. With this role assigned to the System Bootstrappers group, the CSR gets approved automatically as soon as it is submitted and the node becomes part of the cluster. Once the node joins the cluster, it becomes part of the system nodes group and it no longer needs the bootstrap token. Going forward, sometime in the future, when the certificate expires, if you want the node to be able to renew certificate by itself, then associate the cluster role certificate signing request self node client to the system nodes group. Now that we have created the necessary tokens and groups and role associations in the master node, it is time to configure the kubelet. Now, you don't have to remember all these groups by heart. These are available in the Kubernetes documentation page. But this is just a high-level overview of how TLS bootstrapping works. 
So when you walk through the documentation, you can easily follow. In the Kubelet service configuration, we earlier had TLS certificates. We don't have that anymore. Instead, we add a new flag called bootstrap kube config, where we provide the path to a kube config file that has the bootstrap token in it. The bootstrap kube config file is like any other kube config file, except instead of using certificates to authenticate to the API, we use the bootstrap token in the form of token ID dot token secret. With this setup, the worker should be able to use the bootstrap token to get signed certificates from the master API server. To enable the kubelets to automatically renew or rotate certificates when they expire, you must set the rotate certificate flags to true. Now, whatever we have discussed so far is applicable to the kubelet client certificates only. The client certificates that kubelet uses to connect to the API server to join the cluster. The server certificates, as you can see, are still created by us and configured in the kubelet service configuration file. To enable the kubelet to automatically request and rotate server certificates as well, set the rotate server certificates flags to true. Now, there is one difference between how the server and the client certificates are handled. For the client certificates, as we saw, the certificate signing requests are automatically approved. However, that is not the case for server certificates. Server certificates are not automatically approved for security reasons. You must manually approve them yourself using the kube control approve command. Once the kubelet starts, list the certificate signing request and you will see two of them. The one with the name node and from the requester bootstrap is automatically approved. That's the bootstrap client certificate. The other is pending is the server certificate. To approve that, run the kube control certificate approve command. Well, that's a high level overview of what you need to do for enabling TLS bootstrap for kubelets. In the upcoming demo, we will see these in action. Thank you.